Hey everyone, my name is Zoe. I am here to give you guys another video in the Eller Stanlow series. Um, today I really wanted to touch on the psychological side of having a chronic illness. This is something that I think is extremely important that we talk about um, because unfortunately we don't talk about it enough. Um, there is a very difficult side to living with a chronic illness and if you are somebody who is watching these videos for the purpose of educating yourself for a loved one know that it is a tough road there are a lot of things that are going to happen along the road there is going to be a lot of days that are not pretty um we do not enjoy being ill <laughs> So take it easy. We really are hard on ourselves a lot. So keep that in mind. Um, just just be considerate and compassionate um, to your loved ones because it's extremely hard to understand and explain to people who have not experienced it themselves. Um, so if they are having a hard time communicating that to you, just understand that it is very difficult. Um, so with that, let's get started. Um, one of the first things that causes so much of this anxiety, depression, frustration, all of it, is the years and years of fighting with doctors and getting your doctors to listen to you because it will make you feel like you're crazy. Um, I spent years in years knowing that there was something wrong with me in years and years of doctors telling me your lab results look normal you're fine and eventually they said i was a hypochondriac they had all these different they put me in all these different therapies and i was so frustrated and i felt so incredibly alienated and i really felt like there was something wrong with me mentally at that point i felt like i had to just be weak and that it had to be the only explanation was that i just couldn't handle living and eventually when i was about 16 years old i finally had a doctor agree with me and say no they just weren't testing you for the right things um and finally I received my diagnosis for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and it changed my life for the better and for the worse <laughs> um, because on one hand for all of those years I fought trying to find a diagnosis and yes I finally got one however I had that moment where I was so pissed because I finally got that diagnosis, but it got me nowhere. There is no treatment, there is no cure, there's nothing. And that left me feeling hopeless because this thing I had been fighting for for so long turned out to be nothing to me. Um, so I am here to tell you it is okay to feel that moment of defeat because it sucks. It's not a fun thing to get diagnosed with. Not that anything is, but there are so many other things that you can have that there's ways to manage it and help it and treat it and potentially even cure it depending on what it is. And unfortunately, when you're given the diagnosis of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, you don't you don't get any of that. You don't you don't get the comfort of knowing that there's something there's already a plan for you and how to help yourself. Instead, you embark on your own journey um, to find how to help yourself. Um, which, it is hard on both ends. It's, it's very easy to immediately just get pissed at your medical professionals, but they are humans. So we cannot expect them to know everything about every condition that exists because they are not superhumans. They are not computers. So we do have to be somewhat considerate, but as long as you have a doctor that is willing to put in the work and do the research with you, keep with it. Um, another thing that can be extremely helpful is getting a therapist who has regularly worked with chronically ill people. Because here's the thing, when 
those of us with chronic illnesses go to therapy, it's not oftentimes for the same reasons that most people go to therapy. Oftentimes it's about talking about the guilt that comes with living with a chronic illness. The guilt of putting all of your stress and your, your health issues and the ups and downs on your loved ones. I know that is a huge problem for me. I hate having other people involved when I'm not doing okay. I do not like to feel like a burden on other people's lives. I am hyper independent and that is not something that is a good pair with being chronically ill. Um, and we unfortunately need a therapist that knows how to handle that and knows what to talk to you about and knows what to work with you on and for years i hated therapy because i didn't think it worked because so many times i would go to therapists that would just be trying to talk about your regular therapist your everyday life stresses of work and just i don't i don't even i don't know i don't know what normal people go to therapy about normal people because I don't know. My stresses generally all end up coming back to the fact that I have suffered for most of my life. <laughs> and you need someone that's prepared for that and not just, I'm arguing with my wife or my kids or my boss sucks or I don't know, whatever. So it's really important to look for a cognitive behavioral therapist that has done it or something like that. Um, cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy is definitely the one that I suggest the most. Um, but that with that also comes some regular talk therapy. Um, another thing I wanted to say, it's okay to mourn the life you were going to have. And by that, I mean, before diagnosis, most people had a plan for something they wanted to do or where they wanted their life to end up or what they wanted their life to look like. And oftentimes, as soon as you get a diagnosis, that whole thing flips. It is all turned upside down and you have to choose a different path. And that process is a lot like a grief process. It is, we are mourning the life we wanted, the life we had prepared for, the life we were building. I know personally, I wanted to be a dancer. I had danced for 16 years. I wanted to go to New York to be a Radio City Rocket. And a week before I was supposed to go to New York for the first time, I was given my diagnosis. And of course, it all changed. Um, and it took me a very long time to accept that my able-bodied life that I had planned for myself was not going to be a possibility anymore. There were, I, was, I can do some parts of it, but there were huge parts that I would never be able to do and that I needed to be okay with that and that took a while. But when I started to look at it as I was mourning the loss of a person, it helped. And on top of that, I also started trying to look at it not as just the loss of that person, but the birth of a new person. And with that, I also want to say, try to look at all of this as a lesson in appreciation. <laughs> because now when I look back at my best able-bodied moments, I am, I love them so much more. Um, and because of the things I go through, I appreciate the people around me so much more because they, they've they stuck with me through the roller coaster. Um, and just every small moment that I feel okay is a moment that I cherish. And there are so many little things in everyday life that most people would just let pass by that I have learned to really appreciate because it is those small moments when you live like this. You really need to focus on those small moments and be able to like forget that you are a sick kid for a minute because it can be exhausting. Um, but 
anyways we're already 10 minutes into this and i've just been rambling um but a few things that can be caused by all of this are adhd developmental coordination disorder um emotional issues and relationships um like i said earlier guilt um it can just in general cause issues in your relationships because you have that gap of they don't understand what you're going through and few people will um and in that process you will unfortunately really learn who is there for you and who is not um and sometimes that can be a hard pill to swallow but at the end of the day when you have gone through hell and back with your health conditions you will see who's waiting for you and those people are the ones you want to have with you because there is no test like a medical test <laughs> um and yeah that's just use that in a good way um the other possible cause of all of this as i have previously mentioned is the fact that our autonomic nervous system does not function properly so um on top of just all those regular stressors that apparent that unfortunately hop right on when you have a, con a condition like this there's some signs um <laughs> that can make it worse um dysautonomia is a really big one um but also possible other causes are possible adaptation and difficulties in dealing with long-term illness, um, biological cause, different bodily inputs influencing fear and behavior, uh, fear and behavior issues, sorry. Um, there is currently growing evidence um, of enhanced body awareness and sensitivity among people with specifically um, joint hypermobile joint oh my goodness <laughs> joint hypermobile syndrome and hypermobile ehlers danlos syndrome and because of that that hyper awareness in your body and mind it can cause things to be more severe um and just pack just a little bit more of a punch which can also be a explanation for this and why so many things cause us a lot more pain than a lot of other people um but at the end of the day take care of yourself i cannot stress it enough that reach out if you are feeling alone the support groups online have been an incredible resource to me as somebody who has never personally met somebody who has Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I have met a million friends on the internet <laughs> that know exactly what I'm going through, and there are even mentorship programs. Um, I am currently a mentor of three different people, um, helping them through their Ehlers-Danlos journey. Um, so, please, 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 take care of yourself and your mental health because our physical health is only half of our battle so don't be afraid to ask for help don't be afraid to admit that this sucks sometimes because some days i feel like a badass because i live every day in excruciating pain and just dealing with bodily torture and yet I still have a smile on my face and that makes me feel invincible sometimes. But there are some days that I wake up and I feel like I have been run over by 25 dump trucks and I hate everything about my medical diagnosis. So take your good days, take your bad days. Everything is temporary. So whatever extreme pain it's causing you right now, just wait, it'll slow down a little bit later. Might come back, but you know, there will be breaks. Um, that's unfortunately something we have to just hold on to and cherish. <laughs> but as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, or if you just would like to speak to another person that can understand what the hell you're going through in this wild life as a zebra please please let me know um and if you'd like to learn more 
like and subscribe follow me on this journey um and have a great day i will talk to you guys next time i am so sorry for how long this video is <laughs>